Hi guys, hi. Hi everyone. Hi, I'm Arthika from Tarini Foundation and uh, we're of course here today to talk about AIDS awareness, about development so far in treatment and management and prevention. And we have a very special guest with us who is actually an expert in um, clinical HIV AIDS management. So um, I'm just going to wait for her to join um, and then we can start right away. Until then, whoever is here, uh, you can put in your questions in the question mark box at the bottom. We also have some things from our side that we have already asked and, uh, you know, pointers around which we will initiate conversation. But in case you have other questions, we, uh, you know, you can just put them in the question mark box below. So our guest for the day is now on the chat. So I'm going to quickly add her. It's Dr. Nivedita and, you know, we'll have her introduce herself. So I'm just going to quickly add her now. Hi. Okay, so we're just waiting for Dr. Nivedita to start. And once she joins, I think I'll let her, um, you know, introduce herself to you all instead of uh, me doing all the talking. Hi. Again, just repeating for... Uh, Anybody who has joined uh, right now, who's joined after I had said what I was saying, if you have any questions, you can put them below in the question mark box. And we're just waiting for Dr. Nivedita to join us. Okay. Hi. Hi, Lela. Hi, I'm so sorry. I think she's uh, now connecting. Okay, she's here. Hi. Hi. Okay, so everybody, this is Dr. Nivedita. And I was saying that I'm going to um, just wait for you to introduce yourself instead of me doing all the talking. So now that you're here, um, could we just start with hearing a little about you and, uh, you know, what is the work you do? How are you associated with HIV sure, management sure. and prevention? Sure. Yeah. Uh, Sure. So I am a trained dermatologist and a venereologist from India. And I moved to Sydney over, I think now 13 years ago. And I've been doing sexual health and reproductive health and specialize also in uh, women's health. And I also do HIV medicine. So these are my specialties that I um, specialize in. And I really have uh, a fascinating interest in this because I feel like as a young girl when I grew up in India I've missed a lot of not just sexual education but also sexual health and trying to understand things contraception um, HIV care and all of that but also as a clinician when I was a doctor I was also on, on the giving side and I feel like that as clinicians, we are not trained to be able to be so open and ask the right questions and do the right things either. So when I grew up as a young girl, I feel like I didn't give back what I give now to the community. You know, the amount I give back for the youth here or the amount of HIV care and non-stigmatized counseling that we do and what we're able to achieve negative babies for positive mothers and we're able to achieve, uh, you know, people who are positive have a relationship with their partners without transmitting HIV to them. So we're able to achieve so much, which I, as a clinician, young clinician, when I grew up in India, was not able to give. So this is like me coming back and really wanting to give what I missed as a young uh, girl and also what I missed as a young clinician giving back. Uh, so that's, yeah, that that's pretty much me. So that's, that's what I do and that's why I'm here today. Yeah, that was very well said. And I completely understand that there is a lacune in terms of uh, HIV medicine, of course, HIV in itself is a very stigmatized uh, issue in India. But even other than that, just around women's health or just now around alternate health care, there is a big stigma in India. Absolutely. And yes, we definitely need more people like you to 
sort of step in and uh, you know do the amazing work that you're doing yes so, i think it's uh, high time we did that isn't it yeah so you know uh, of course there is there is a lot of parts to what we're going to be talking about today um, including some of the points you just covered about how there isn't much space to even talk about hiv let alone like spreading awareness about it but before we go into that uh, could i request you to just for the benefit of all of the viewers and myself as well um, could you just introduce us to what hiv is what aids is um, you know also covering the ways in which it's transmitted because uh, a lot of pop, pop culture is only telling us that uh, it's only sexual activity that spreads aids or it's uh, you know and it's stigmatized in that sense so just a brief introduction and uh, you know also including uh, how we were talking about whether hiv and aids is the same thing or not so um, you know i feel like that's a, a easy place to start from and a very important place to have a clear foundation of what what is So, All right so let me first start off with let's do first a hiv um hiv is a human immunodeficiency virus and it is a viral infection uh which is acquired and i think among so many viruses that we cannot get rid of like for example even chickenpox or herpes like H- hiv falls among one of those category of viruses which we actually cannot rid of and will carry it for rest of our life if we get infected by it so hiv is not the first virus to be honest which is doing that so like i said we've had chickenpox for years and years that virus does exactly the same thing what hiv does HIV is a stronger virus and it kind of affects your immune system and fights with your immune system and its main role is to attack the immune system cells and destroy it i think that's very important to understand and that is when i think now i'm going to move on to talk about aids because HIV itself when the virus comes into your body it is not harmful HIV itself does not kill you and people who have HIV virus for a long time and are carrying it who, who are under treatment actually do not die so that's very important that's a very important message that i want to give today if the HIV virus is untreated they start multiplying just so much enormously then they destroy the immune system when your immune system is destroyed you start picking up infections which you usually will not pick up so let's say for example pneumocystis pneumonia or a, a a rare or a difficult form of tuberculosis or toxoplasmosis or you know oral fungal infections and things like that those things usually people with a good immune system will not pick up but when your immune system is dropping then you start picking up these infections which are the infections which are actually very difficult to treat and also because your immune system is very low those are the infections which actually kind of kill you and that process where you get these opportunistic um infections is called aids so aids is acquired immunodeficiency syndrome so when your immune yeah. system becomes deficient you start having syndromes which are going to kill you in the end so that is the end stage of aids and that used to happen initially because of the new virus because we were trying to find treatment we were trying to find you know vaccinations like how we are doing with corona these days yeah. right it's yeah it's pretty much when it was a new infection and when it destroyed people's immune system there were a lot of aids happening but to be honest we have come a long way in the finding of you know pharmacotherapy as we called antiretroviral drugs where we've come a long way and these drugs are just brilliant like they've come to ask down to one tablet once a day like a vitamin okay. you know so many bodybuilders and you know people are taking multiple vitamins multiple tablets a day <laughs> and instead the hiv medication nowadays is only one tablet once a day okay. and i think today i want to emphasize very clearly that hiv is no longer a death sentence hiv is <laughs> now defined the whole definition of hiv has changed it is now defined as a chronic condition like diabetes or hypertension 
medication right. which can be managed which can be controlled if you start the medications at the right time and if you do a good lifestyle modification you know like anything else diet exercise smoking alcohol right. you know addressing all of those things it is more a chronic illness and it's not definitely a death sentence that sentence yeah. happens only when people are not getting tested they don't want to get treated and if they are scared and worried mm -hmm. then the whole aids process happen but in today's era we should be able to actually prevent aids and consider hiv as a chronic disease so so i think one of the so that's hiv and aids yeah so i think one of the important things uh, that i picked up from what you right now said uh, you know which is very very relevant is that HIV uh, AIDS has for a long time been thought of as something that you're going to die of. So exactly. it's such a scary thing and it can be such a daunting experience to even go and get yourself tested because you know as humans you don't even want to like you know, want to hear it. Exactly. Exactly. And uh, you know it's basically it feels like the end of the world. Um so I guess I'm uh, I and I think the rest of the users as well would be relieved to hear this first of all what you're saying that um hiv does not any more in 2020 thanks to all of the research and all of the development yes. that has happened mean mm -hmm. that you're going to die in fact if it's yes. found at the right time and treated you you can go back to living your life no you know, yes. the way you were living it yes uh, you know before this so Absolutely. that's definitely a great fact to know and um, just great to know in itself also and thank you for also clarifying uh, the distinction between hiv and aids um the next question i guess that i'm going to move on to is um uh, how can you acquire like how can you catch the hiv infection considering hiv is the virus that's sort of the causative agent that's the pathogen so sure. um what are the ways in which you acquire it um and i guess also roughly touching upon the stigma that exists around it how yes. somebody who is hiv positive will be shamed Uh, you know, yes. because they would be yes. uh, people I would think, assume that I they have. I think we should talk about the stigma and yeah. that being a major reason to you know testing and diagnosing with HIV. I mean, yes, people used to worry that it used to be a life-threatening condition, but yeah. also people used to worry that they are going to be judged, that their character is going to be judged yeah. if you're diagnosed with HIV. And I think that is a big reason for. stigma i think the whole thing about stis and stigma is people associate stis with someone's character and i think exactly. i think that's what is happening and that is what is the big stigmatizing bit of it which i think we are out here to actually say it's not true sexual need of a person has nothing to do with whether a person is absolutely gorgeous or not um mm -hmm. and i think that has to be emphasized and reemphasized which we will we will talk about the whole stigma and why that happens in a bit mm -hmm. um just coming down to your question of acquiring hiv so hiv can be acquired in a few ways the most common way is sexual acquirement where you can get through you know sexual fluids like semen or vaginal discharge or blood during sex and sexual transmission is one but that's not the only transmission you can also get it from injecting drugs or sharing those needle and equipments with other people so that's another way that you can have acquire hiv a lot of the people do think that hiv is very common only among gay men or men who have sex with men and that's not true the world population actually largest number of hiv is heterosexual transmission and it is also seen vastly among people who have sex with sex workers and and among sex workers in some of the countries so that has to be really keep in mind that that is considered as a high risk behavior and that is a way of transmission and hiv can also be transmitted from mom to babies uh it can right. happen either during delivery when you know when they are pregnant and delivery and that's why i think hiv testing during pregnancy is very very important so that we are able to prevent that these days with the medications and stuff like that and it can also occasionally be transmitted during breastfeeding and a lot of the countries even if now we are delivering babies who are hiv negative even for positive mums we still do not advise that they breastfeed um the children because breastfeeding also can transmit hiv and there is a bit of a debate whether there is an amount of uh hiv in the breast milk but there is also you know the cuts and the bleeding and you know all that associated with you know sucking and you know around mothers 
um, breast. So is that also pay, playing a major role in transmission of HIV is also um, a possibility that is present. I think some countries, like especially like South Africa, they really struggle with it because of the need and the, you know, and the strong belief of how breastfeeding plays such a big role, uh, yeah. where there are a lot of people who just get purely through breastfeeding transmitted through as well. So these are some ways that HIV actually can be transmitted and that you have to be aware of. I think yeah. the basic is body fluids. So you just have to remember there has to be a blood to blood contact or there has to be a vaginal discharge or semen or breast milk, you know, things like that coming in contact with, um, you know, with yeah. each other. And that's exactly how you spread HIV. With an additional, uh, you know, case of the mother's breast milk. To that's read. correct. That's correct. Yeah. That's something that we have to keep in mind. And even if you're delivering negative BBs, like I said, we definitely don't encourage breastfeeding after the baby's right. been delivered. Yes. Right. Um, so, you know, you mentioned something about how uh, one of the high risk behaviors when it comes to acquiring HIV is uh, intercourse with sex workers or sexual contact yes. with sex workers. Yes. Um, and, you know, sometimes that in itself has become uh, a, a talk or like a point for stigma, which is about how people with multiple partners are definitely going to get HIV. Uh, but I guess like the point of clarity here should be that they're going to get HIV if those multiple partners are also infected and it's not the act. No, but you can also get you can also get HIV from one partner exactly. who is actually <laughs> doing the risky behavior. I mean, you may yes, feel right, right, like right. Uh, to be honest, we do see a lot of, um, I mean, I'm not categorizing anybody in particular, but we do, let's say like, you know, in the line of uh, where the truck traveling happens and truck drivers and, you know, we see a lot of HIV and stuff like that. So if they are using a lot of sex workers, let's just say, uh, and if they have one regular partner at home, who's the wife, she might be thinking that he's the yeah, only man definitely. that she is having sex with. But yeah it comes down to his sexual behavior and his risk, to be honest. So I think that's very, very important, actually, yeah. you know, as to what the risk of your sexual partner is as well. So that's why I think regular testing and testing during pregnancy is very, very important, uh, just to be sure that you're able to rule out HIV. And even if it is, early diagnosis and treatment is the key these days. And you're able to completely, actually, even if we diagnose in the first trimester, you know, of a mother who is pregnant right. and she's HIV positive. By the time she reaches a point where she delivers the baby, we are able to make her virus undetectable so okay. that we are able to deliver that baby negative, actually. So the amount of work okay. we do like that is just tremendous. So I think we have to emphasize on testing and, you know, and early treatment. And that's very And important. like testing and screening being, uh, you know, the method that's going to sort of reduce the incidence uh, yes. at a larger level. Absolutely. And at an early time, right? And we, and right. you'll also be using treatment as prevention. So if some, if, okay. let's say people get regularly tested and they know that they have HIV in an early stage, then the treatment is started early and they are able to uh, stop the spread to their regular partners even. Right. So if you start treating yourself early and if you're able to achieve an undetectable viral load is what we call now. So the virus becomes really, really so less in your blood because of the medication that you're okay. not actually transmitting to your regular partner, even if you have unprotected sex. So that's okay. how far. Yeah. So that's how far we have actually come. So I think this knowledge and this education is so important. Um, and I think destigmatizing this is the key is very important, yeah. like you said, right? So the minute the word HIV comes, you're right. People are being associated with, could he be gay? Could he be having sex with sex workers? Could yeah. he be somebody who's being judged? Yes, you know, completely. And, and, and it's like demoralizing people. And, and it, the HIV diagnosis always goes on the basis of moral grounds. And I think that has to be stopped because that is not, I mean, also, not just HIV, any STI, you know, I think the moral yeah. branding of any STI acquiring with someone's character or personality is, is something that has to change, something that's got to flip around. And we have to accept people for what they are and their sexual yeah. activity and needs and sexual behavior is completely independent of the kind yeah. of person people are to be honest. And I think that's very important. And that's going to take a while, you know, for all of Absolutely. us to work on it. Yes, and emphasize this on people. But I think the more we say, the more we normalize this, 
you know, the more we have a whole bunch of non-judgmental doctors, non-judgmental peers, non-judgmental educators like you guys, you know, it's so important. We are normalizing, you know, uh, sexual behavior. We are normalizing STIs and that is going to cut the stigma. So we yeah. have a lot of work to do in terms of, you know, testing, treatment and all of that and education. Yeah. But we also have a lot of work to do in terms of destigmatizing this whole Asia yeah. bank. And that sort know, of forms the backbone of it all. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I'll just take a minute to say that um, all of the viewers, if there's anybody who has any questions that you directly want to ask, um, you can just put them down in the question mark box below. Um, of course, there are a few things that we're going to be talking about from our side and we'll hopefully cover, uh, you know, everything. But if there are more specific questions, you can please put them down in the question mark box at the bottom. Um, okay, so just moving on from there, uh, you know, there were a couple of things you said, which I would uh, want to pick up specifically and ask you more, uh, you know, to elaborate a little bit more on those. Um, yeah. The first one being, you said something about preventive um, medicines being at such a level now that some it is now possible for somebody with, who is HIV positive to have intercourse without using protection. Um, yes. You know, also obviously using protection is a whole different topic and, you know, another one which we can discuss and we can discuss the benefits of it because there are many. Uh, but coming down to a person's choice, uh, you said something like somebody who is HIV positive now is... Um, can possibly um, have intercourse without using protection. So what is that about? And, uh, you know, where does that fit in HIV prevention, where condoms have been proposed as one of the big methods to prevent yes. uh, HIV transmission? HIV. Yes. So I think you are right. I think use of condoms is such an important element and I would not negotiate that at all. And like you said, prevention of HIV is one element, but using condoms prevents you from so many other STIs and also, you know, you know, the other STIs are developing drug resistance these days and, you know, a whole bunch of things. So using condom, I think is prime. It's very important, right? But you, but people also do have regular relationships they are married they want to have children and like you said some of them don't prefer to use condoms or not using condoms so in that situation we have come up with a lot of strategies which are prevention strategies for those who do not want to use condoms or you know cannot use condoms or want to have babies and things like that so we have come up with several strategies and i want to emphasize very clearly here more than the fact that a HIV positive person can have unprotected sex. The key word here will be treatment. Right. So the a HIV positive person who is on treatment, who has an undetectable viral load, can then have unprotected sex with a partner. So I think that's what is key. And I think those two words are very, very important in how we are, you know, putting across. I don't want to put across if you're HIV positive, you can have unprotected sex. No, no, that's not what it is. That if you're HIV positive, is undetectable. you're on treatment and your right. virus is less than 20 copies, which we call it as undetectable, then okay. you're able to have unprotected sex with your regular partner, with your wife. You're also able to have babies and she can be pregnant and they can both be negative if you are taking the treatment and you are undetectable. So I think this comes down to the responsibility of someone who is HIV positive. Rather than fearing being HIV positive, rather than being worried about being HIV positive. I want people to understand that it doesn't matter if you're HIV positive. If you pop a pill every day, you will yeah. be able to, uh, you know, uh, live a life of a normal, uh, in, I can't say normal, of an individual who is able to do other things. Like I said, you can have unprotected sex with your wife or partner. And you can and you're have also definitely protecting your immune system from like absolutely see disease, you're preventing like that you're preventing yourself from AIDS, <laughs> which means you're not going to die anytime soon and you're going to have a normal quality of life and you're going yeah. to live forever then now you <laughs> that you're going to live forever you want to get married you want to have babies yeah okay so in yes order because to um, all of yeah that, because the whole narrative around hiv um eventually leading to death and a quicker death mm -hmm. uh 
does change the quality of life does change uh, you know what you plan for yourself in life and i guess that's the whole fear of it mm-hmm, um okay mm-hmm. so that was great to know um mm-hmm. moving from there again picking up from something you just said about how it is possible for um an hiv positive mother to have a baby who is hiv negative is is that yes. what we were uh, yeah yes yes and, and again it works the other way as well if the father is hiv positive and the yes. mother is Yes. Okay. Yes. So I think we spoke about if the father is HIV positive on treatment undetectable viral load then he's able to have sex with his wife without protection and she can fall pregnant. Right. And test I mean of course she will be tested throughout the pregnancy uh which also means that she will be negative or made sure that she's been negative and the baby will be negative as well this is if the father if the male is hiv positive if the female yeah. has already become hiv positive she, like any individual like i've told you she should be on treatment already anyway and she yeah. should be having an undetectable viral load so that's the key so if she has an undetectable viral load she can actually have a negative baby again there are different research actually to be honest saying whether they are allowed to have vaginal deliveries or is it better to have cesarean okay. so the studies show that if you have cesarean then the transmission rate is really not there so that's much okay. much better because the control is there yes you can be reassured that if you're having cesarean and your viral load is undetectable yes you're going to have a negative baby but we also recommend they don't breastfeed after that they go straight to bottle feed Absolutely. but some of the countries there's a lot of studies that's coming up saying when mothers have had undetectable viral load vaginal delivery is actually okay and they can have negative babies even through vaginal delivery so that's i think that will come to the comfort of the clinician and how much they want to take you know that risk or you know that stuff like that i think eventually we will get there uh, yeah. but these are the two things but the outcome is really good so yes it's true so the mother who was positive if she's undetectable can have a negative baby uh, yeah. but the negative baby of a positive mother usually gets some hiv treatment for the first month so that's very important so as a preventive keep- measure as a preventive measure so they do a hiv test to the baby when it's born so if if it, it might have some antibodies that it picked from the mother so for that they give like a month of medication in the hospital but they will keep repeating the baby's hiv test at least up to 2 years of age just yeah. to make sure that the baby is negative and yes and we have had really successful negative babies like that um, i mean that's yes, more than so Yes, yes, that's amazing. That's amazing. I feel from from where HIV is gone by, and where where HIV was only AIDS, we are coming and talking about you know babies and and family and marriage and yeah and unprotected stuff. And like how can that, even prevent yes. you know, HIV from becoming AIDS? Sorry, you know how you can even prevent your HIV from becoming AIDS from going into that last stage. Uh, yes. Yeah so that's that's absolutely amazing and yes like you said the method of delivery i guess you know in in a couple of more years as they do more research and they have yes, more definitely, definitely. That, yes yes absolutely uh, you know that's something that can sort of be done then um, okay yeah. meanwhile we've got a question which is um, you know it, it's it's a question which i feel like i do hear a lot again coming from a place where there is a lot of paranoia around hiv yes. where there is this entire Here. so the question yeah. i'm sure you can see it also i'll just read it out yes. um it says if someone is having intercourse with more than one partner let's mm-hmm. say with two people and if mm-hmm. three of them are not infected with hiv then is it possible that anyone will get hiv or aids no yeah so the but this no is no i want to no, no, no. it's about. not over <laughs> so so the short answer to that is no right yeah. but all you need in this triangle is one of them to breach this triangle <laughs> you know all you need is for one of them to i don't know find another partner or have a i don't know drunk night or just a slip or an accident or you know all that's all you need for an infection to yeah. actually come into that triad So as much as we talk about oh I have two regular partners but you know and 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 we are all in an agreement so it's going to be just the three of us and stuff like that yes if it's logically there is no way that you know 
Lahaja, we can come into you know that triangle if all yeah. the three of you are negative and you know that's all you're doing. But in a triangle, there is always ifs and buts with sexual sex and sexual relationship. All you need is one single breach or one single night where it slipped. And, and if that happens, not, happen, not like the COVID social bubble now. Exactly. Where all you need is one person to breach. Exactly. It. All you need is one person who's asymptomatic to transmit. You know. Exactly like the COVID, and if that happens, all three in the triangle is gone. All three of you are going to get it, but you all will be thinking, "We are negative because we tested at a point and we started this agreement and this relationship." But then right. that's all it takes, to be honest. So I always tell people, look, if you're in more than a monogamous relationship, like even in monogamous relationship, if you've had other partners in the past, I've always recommend people to use condoms for the first three months just to see even if this is a real relationship or is it just a yeah. you know thing. And if you feel like in three months things are stabilized and it feels like a real relationship, then both of you go and get tested because three months is a good window for most STIs, HIV, syphilis, you oh. know. all your other so in about 3 months mark into a relationship if you kind of get tested and you're both negative and i think that's that's pretty clear right you've been together for 3 months it looks like a monogamous relationship you got a check at that point and then you're good to go without condoms but let's say if it's an open relationship because people do have open relationship these days they have a regular girlfriend but they kind of have an agreement that if you're attracted to someone else you're still allowed right. to have So if it's an open relationship yes trust is there in all of that but clearly trust somehow hasn't been proven as a prevention strategy for any sti <laughs> or a prevention strategy for hiv especially so i always tell people get yourself tested maybe maybe if you don't want to do it every 3 months maybe do it 6 months maybe do it twice a year or maybe even yeah. throw it like once a year you know because that is so yeah. important uh because like i said all you need is that one night all you need is that one breach um so in an open relationship if you feel like you're having more than one partner and if you're not using condoms trust is your last prevention strategy um and i think so much about the trust because you know for all you know your partner also doesn't know that they might be infected you're so right. uh, you're right. <laughs> why when and it? when this happened exactly exactly yeah. so so i think trust is i don't think i will bet on trust and and to be honest like in today's era where we are propaganda you know all this prevention there's also other prevention strategies maybe we'll talk about it later artika but um you know with all the prevention strategies we are still getting hiv positive people with a lot yeah. of misunderstanding about oh but i know him but i know her oh but she is not like that i'm thinking like what like yeah. what what exactly are you expecting her to like you know i don't know yeah. i think they have this kind of an image of people who will actually have hiv or have hiv and, and i think absolutely. and i think that has to stop that really has to stop nobody looks like they have hiv nobody looks or does anything and they say oh but she's really lovely yes lovely people can that's have again sex. going back to the that's stigma. allowed <laughs> yes yes so i think that's important where people think yeah. that lovely people are not meant to have a good sex drive and i think that honestly not true. doesn't have anything to do with whether they love you or not they are, whether they absolutely you know. absolutely and i think <laughs> that is what is important because people are putting their trust on people thinking oh i know her well i known him for a long time or oh, he's a good friend of mine yes he still is a good friend of yours but that has nothing to do with who he's having sex with or what his sexual yeah, needs are yeah. you know um so i think trust is definitely yeah so if yeah is i and wouldn't I bet on like it. a victim and uh, you know a victim in an attacker situation where if somebody sort of gets the infection from somebody and they know who that somebody is and this newly infected person uh, you know sort of becomes the victim and all of the blame goes on to this person but so that is very that's very interesting you brought that up because i think that's very interesting because you know in a relationship only i think the only the person who actually got infected or who brought it in would actually really tr- know the truth to be honest yeah uh, if so we are, we are, we do have people where we test one person and they are positive and then we say we have to bring your partner in and treat them and we try we we test them and look and they are positive as well and then honestly like we have counseling sessions and we have therapy and we have people sitting and thinking i don't think it is me i don't think it is me i think it is him because he used okay. to you know the whole the whole blame situation the whole yeah. guilt tripping the whole blame situation just comes up as to people want to know 
they don't want to agree it's them they don't want to agree it's them they they want to know who gave it to who but sometimes it could be very tricky to find out who gave it to who in a situation yeah. like that because only the person who actually breached that triangle or who breached that relationship will actually know that yeah and if neither of them has been tested and okay like honestly yes, at a point of exactly. tinder and bumble yeah. so Yes. Most so people are most likely to have multiple partners. No, no, no. I know for sure I got tested two months ago. Let's say. Yeah. Then you're at a better place. Then you kind of know. You know, if yeah. both of them say that, oh, we've been seeing each other for three years now, and we thought yeah. we were not that, you know, we didn't trust. We trusted each whatever. Well, that's not good enough, is it? Like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Um. Okay. Um. Another question. So, uh, let's say this is with respect to. testing at an individual level so you know how often should people get tested so i think you said that if you are if you have multiple partners over time even if you have one partner at a time but over time if you have multiple partners 3 to 6 months is a good uh, you know sort yes. of time yes um, look if if you consider yourself high risk and if you consider yourself having high risk high risk when i said you know whether you're a gay man or whether you have men with sex bisexual transgender or whether you're sex working or have sex with sex workers either or when you consider yourself high risk i think a blood test or all sti test anything should be done on a three monthly basis so like in brothels like in australia in stuff like that three monthly testing and giving a copy of the results to the brothel is very important so oh. they make sure that the sex workers go and get regularly tested and provide a certificate so we give what is called a worker certificate saying that they came in and they got tested and everything was which clear yes and which they have to take and provide it to their brothels which is very very important and most of most of the licensed brothels do that and i think that's such a good way to you know keep check of your sti all sort of unregulated in india which is yes uh, yes you know yes. problematic it's also important like you know i mean it's easy for me to say that here to be honest but even here a lot of work goes it's not easy especially yeah. when we having like you know immigrants working and on different kind of visa and stuff like that it's a really very gray area about whether people want to come out and get tested they're scared you know they're worried and things like that so it takes a lot of outreach for us to actually go and visit parlors you know hand out a lot of condoms and and education and give our card and say that this is very confidential you know your treatment is free and really gain their confidence that is that's very important right because i think they are scared they are worried they are worried about being judged they are worried about being out so so i think as doctors and also this is their you know this is where they're making money from so it's absolutely and this is their bread and this is their bread and breakfast isn't it like like this is very important for them so they have to gain confidence that these people are not going to show them in or you know going to dob on them or this is you know we have to the, the level of confidence and the level of work and the number of people involved in doing this is enormous like i said and yeah. i think yeah we need that as well so 3 monthly is something that i would recommend for somebody like if i'm saying sex workers let's say they're seeing up to like i don't know 8 to 10 clients a day or 6 to 8 clients yeah. a day uh and if they have such a big turnover three monthly is good and same with men yeah. who have sex, sex with men so if you're someone who is having you know more than 10 partners let's say 10 to 15 partners in about three months that's so okay. which means which means you need a test so i i i would usually gauge it to that number and yes hmm. and i think in terms of long standing relationships like i said trust is yes trust is one thing guys but i think in today's era we just have to be a little bit more sensible than trust you know just we have to, yes we have to do contraception more than purely withdrawal and trusting or we have to do sti screens more than you know just saying i didn't think he or she was you know so i think we have to move towards that era and i think we need space for that as well um are the guys in it we need space which is confidential we need space that people can go and actually do this it's easy for me to say but no, if no. yeah if we are not there providing that space to young people who are sexually active how are they going to come and do what we are saying yeah yeah, yeah. and yeah. yes that is step one to treatment for anything mm-hmm. um and you know the same is the case here mm-hmm. uh, of mm-hmm. course there's much mm-hmm. more stigma attached to this but uh, yes. at the same time testing is the only way sort of out yes um yes. 
Yeah. And I think we have to, sorry, with the testing, we, I think asymptomatic testing is very important to know because people sometimes wait for symptoms. They feel yeah. like I'm feeling well. I don't think I have it because they assume that HIV AIDS are supposed to look like people who are like, you know, lost muscles and really yeah. thin. They have this image of AIDS on the, in the older days. They, people think like, oh, I'm not sick. I don't think I have AIDS. I don't look like I have AIDS or HIV. But nobody looks like that anymore. With the medications, mm -hmm. nobody looks like they have HIV. Or, you know, there's not the, that look that we call, we've kind of lost it. We don't have it anymore. Yeah. So I mean, not a good of, thing to rely on. Not all. a good thing to rely on. <laughs> and also, like, if, if you are having high risk behavior, let's just say, you need to get tested, whether you're having symptoms or not, whether you're feeling well or not, it doesn't matter. If you're feeling unwell, if you're having like a flu symptoms after you've had unprotected sex, of course, you will freak out and you'll go and get tested. I understand. But even if you have nothing, you have to understand the risk and you have to go get regular tests and make sure that you've been negative at several points. And that's the way to have a healthy sexual life, not getting any infection and not transmitting it to other people. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, in line of testing, again, like I said, that I think a lot of people in the younger generation, especially, but people in general are moving towards open relationships, are moving towards uh, casual, uh, yeah. you know, dating Thanks. or sexual experiences. Yeah. So in such a scenario, if there is somebody who's sort of moving from that to monogamy, and uh, this is, of course, like, speaking from an individual point of view and not talking about trust between the partners. So that individual for themselves, what should be their frequency of testing? So, like, yes, that's what, the, so like I said, when you're starting a relationship from, uh, let's say, you, like you said, casual, and then you're starting to see someone that you really like and you think this is going to go somewhere, get tested when you start seeing them. That's a good idea. Yeah. And, you know, use a condom for three months, like I said, because three months is a good yeah. time to see if this is a relationship or it's a casual fling or that's all it lasts for. And three months is a good time. And after three months, you get tested again. And then you'll know and how to get tested. Is. Yes, both. Both should get tested. Yeah. And then you can probably think about having unprotected sex only if you want to. But if you're uncomfortable or if both of you are happy to negotiate condoms and you want to use condoms even yes. as contraception, that's fine too. I mean, it's not like if you're in a monogamous relationship, you have to go off condoms. Condoms can still be used as a method of not just contraception, you know. It's not just for STI prevention. Condoms are not all about STI. Their primary role is actually contraception, isn't it? So, so you know, you can still keep using condoms till you're comfortable or if both of you are comfortable. In fact, if, you know, if the guys are able to actually come and they are able to have a good sensation, they're not complaining about it. Why not use it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I mean, that, that being said, which is what we were discussing earlier as well, that like condoms go beyond HIV. Of course, today we're talking about HIV. So focusing them yeah. all here. Um, quickly moving on from this point where we were talking about condoms uh, being a good idea in general always. Yes, to, yes, uh, definitely. Talking about uh, to talking about what are some of the methods of prevention of yeah. for HIV um, prevention A uh, that you're somebody who does not have it and you know that right now and you want to ensure that you do not contract it in the future and uh, also then in terms of management that you're somebody who does have it and like now what are the next steps you should be taking and what are some of the doctors you should be seeing experts you should be seeing in that in that term. Okay, perfect. So let's talk about those who do not have HIV and what they can do to prevent themselves from getting HIV. There are a few things that are out there. And I think the first thing that tops the list and easiest thing is condoms. Uh, and that's always going to be that way. And that's a fantastic way to prevent yourself from acquiring HIV or any STIs and contraception. So it's like a you know, it's like a ball rolling thing that condom is. So if somebody can actually use it, that is still the primary way to actually prevent um, HIV, I would say. The other ways that you can prevent HIV, there are two medical strategies that's in place now. One is called PEP, which is post-exposure prophylaxis. And the other is called PrEP, which is pre-exposure prophylaxis. So it's like, you know, like I'm just going to say, you know, when sometimes when people have keep having UTIs, they sometimes give them antibiotics and say, keep taking this because to prevent yourself from getting UTIs. It's something like that. So oh, yes. if you're someone who 
Look, the the bottom line is you cannot convince someone to use condoms, so you cannot scare someone to use condoms, and that is the thing behind this research. To be honest, you know, so these are set of people who are going to get absolute pleasure by not using condoms, and they are going to not use condoms whether they are going to get HIV or not. It doesn't matter whether you tell them you're going to get HIV. It doesn't matter whatever. These are people who are, I don't know, either. willingly want to do that kind of high risk behavior because they enjoy it or they could get pleasure only with unprotected and they cannot yeah. get pleasure so there are different reasons why people actually do it and for them there is actually this pep and prep so with the post exposure prophylaxis like the name said you can take a tablet every day for 28 days and that is taken after this exposure has happened so let's say somebody okay. has had unprotected sex with someone and they were too drunk they didn't realize it and now they feel like they are at risk of acquiring hiv they go to either an emergency department or to a clinician who can give them a prescription for this medication within 72 hours the sooner the better if you realize the next day morning oh shit go the next day or you can go with you have 3 days within 72 hours and you get this medication and you start taking it for 28 days and this medication prevents you from getting hiv 98% of the times so it is absolutely fantastic the prevention after it has happened so it's like the morning after pill it's okay yeah. you should have yes it's like you should have had contraception but you didn't and if this yeah. happened don't panic you can go and get post exposure prophylaxis the other thing these days because of the amount of times they are having unprotected sex the post exposure prophylaxis was not really keeping up they were coming for again like i'm thinking you're doing it every other time so then what has happened is we now have pre exposure prophylaxis for those who regularly do unprotected sex and who want to do and will not use a condoms so in order to prevent that they take this pill uh it it's a tablet which has two drugs in it and this tablet actually is also used for hiv treatment um and they take this tablet every day just for months to go so so every 3 months they still have to make sure they go and get a hiv test and that they're negative and every th- every 3 to 6 months they can just make sure how their kidneys and liver are doing because they have decided to take a medication every single day and the hiv medications are not I mean they are very strong medications because they do yeah, very important role. Yeah, ultimately you're ingesting chemicals. Exactly. And and you know the liver and the kidneys take a take a big hit on these medications and that's something that they need to know. Um and you just have to get your liver and kidneys checked very often and get a prescription mm-hmm. from your doctor and make sure your HIV is being negative continuously and you can be on this pill for however long you want. Oh. Okay. Okay, so and let's I say you can the- Yeah, sorry. Okay. Go for it. So I guess no, no, you go for it. It's like it's like it's literally like an emergency after pill, which you know people use in That's right. the case that they forget yes. to use contraception or contraception is broken or whatever the reason may be. Yes. Seen. Yes. And I guess and that's like, no, that's the post exposure prophylaxis. The post exposure. Yeah. The pre is you have decided there is no way you're going to use condoms. You enjoy condom less sex. You have made up that mind. and not i mean the doctor can say oh my Which god like the birth we can say whatever we want but to be yeah. honest again that's something that we have to accept as well you know people usually yeah. think if you shout at people and give them a good piece of advice that they are going to go out and change <laughs> but that's yeah. not true that's never going to happen you, okay. you know what i mean whether it's you know whether it's <laughs> your child or whether it is about being it. friends with someone or whether it's about dating someone or having a boyfriend if if you know if we are thinking we are going to have a good yell at people and you know and say stuff and they're going to go out and change for you that's a blunder that's not going to happen yeah right um, i think i guess my yes. question here was that the post exposure pill um, you know we're just comparing it to uh, you know what in india is sold as an i pill under the brand name i pill which is an emergency yes. pill So yes. just like that uh, what would your advice should it be used uh, i mean is it okay to be used often or like the emergency pill it should only and absolutely be used see the emergency if there's pill, an emergency no the emergency pill is only one tablet yeah but this post exposure prophylaxis is a 28 day course which means it's even more stronger <laughs> it's stronger and because it has to prevent your hiv you see so yeah, yeah so it is a 28 day course but if you're using it quite often let's say we, we you need prep 
which is pre-exposure prophylaxis because you're pretty yeah. much taking this pep every day why are you calling it yeah. pep why are you doing it post exposure and stressing yourself up you rather just take it every day and do it because you're going to do it anyway yeah right. so so for people who repeatedly get pep let's just say it is time to reevaluate their sexual needs sexual pleasure and probably they need to start on prep oh you know and that yeah. that that's very important that's what we need to do and i also and i also think that you know like contraception like if somebody is having morning after pill every other day or every other month it's time to actually for them to sit down and talk with the doctor as to what long term contraception i can have yeah like maybe get on the birth control pill that exactly birth control pill or you know the rod or you have iud's you have so many yeah, things these days so it's high time you sit and have a conversation about that rather than keep doing this morning after right so right. the pep, the pep is like that too so if you're doing pep a few times it's time to sit down and evaluate it's happening a few times i probably enjoy it or i'm probably going to do it Why Why can't I just be on prep and take it every day? So you know everybody is not stressed, and it you know serves the purpose and stuff like that. So, um, so those two strategies are very important for people who are not using condoms or not willing to for prevention. Uh, but I would also like to say, when you're using PEP and PrEP, you have to remember that you're going off the condoms, which actually kind of prevents other STIs, which is very very important. Absolutely. Right, right. Right. Which is what we keep saying. Exactly. So you're everyone. opening yourself to acquire other STIs. So with the introduction of this PEP and PrEP in the Western world, I should say there has been an increase in STIs among you know men who have sex with men, and uh, yeah, and that is something you got to cope when you decide not to use condoms and be highly sexually active. So that is something you need to keep in mind. You know. um so that's very important with that so these three strategies are for people who are negative and like i told you for the people who are positive in terms of taking care of them preventing not to give hiv to other people or being able to lead a normal life it is treatment it is treatment treatment is the key so the word that we use and the unaids have used is treatment as prevention so we right. have used treatment as a prevention strategy so if you So for us in our country like if you take a local area 99% of the people who are diagnosed with HIV are on treatment which yeah. means we are controlling transmission so and that's the only way to go about it yes yes so we're also so not only are people who are having unprotected sex on pep and prep but also yeah. those who are positive are on treatment and we are making them undetectable so they don't give the HIV So right. if we follow all these strategies you know interacting um, yeah. I think that is absolutely fantastic and it's a great way to control the uh, HIV and I uh, and the UN AIDS strategy is 90 90 90 so which means 90% of the people who are sexually active needs to be screened 90% right. of the people who are diagnosed with HIV HIV need to be uh, starting mm -hmm. on treatment asap and 90% of them you know who have should be treated as well so there's this 90 90 policy where you make sure that all these things happen and it's like a prevention strategy for HIV okay um mm -hmm. i know you have to hop on to another call in like yes 7 minutes <laughs> I'm so, I'm so sorry. But I do have I try, one. Yes, I tried to do just I usually try to do only one, but today I just yeah. couldn't. I was yes. <laughs> no, as you know, I was looking at the time, but I have one mm -hmm. um question which I feel like yeah, all of us could benefit from. Yeah. Um a very simple question, but I even I don't I don't exactly know the answer to it, so I would love to put it out there. which is that uh, you know, whether you're looking to prevent HIV, whether you've tested positive and are now looking for treatment. Who sorry, sorry, is like, I don't, sorry. Say it again. Say it again. Um, you know whether you're looking to prevent HIV, so maybe go for either of the medications, or you think that maybe you could have contracted it from somewhere, or you're somebody who has tested positive. Who should be your key health resource person? Um, who is the doctor you should be going to? What? Because you know, I feel like as uh, as a woman, I feel like. for a lot of things i just head over to my gynecologist gynecologist uh, <laughs> it just seems like my go to thing I and know, uh, I know. you know then like have her tell you like you need to go and get an ultrasound like that would yes. strike me first i'll first just go yes. to my gynecologist yeah um i mean personally my gynecologist is wonderful but yes. generally speaking who is the doctor or who is sort of the specialist that we should be yes. looking for or going to 
Okay. So so there are a few people who take care of HIV care, to be honest. And I think in, in, in India, like, you know, the dermatology degree comes with venereology and a lot of the dermatologists actually do venereology as well. And they are, you no, know, so you can see them. And uh, I think there's a very small number of dermatologists who actually practice venereology or sexual health. Most dermatologists are dermatologists or cosmetologists, you know, more in a field like that than venereology unfortunately but yeah. but they are someone that you can actually go to they're geared up to be able to guide you and treat you for hiv and stuff like that the infectious disease specialists are another group of people who actually take care of hiv and hiv care so most of the big hospitals like i know you know apollo and other hospitals they all have infectious disease specialists and infectious disease specialists are specially geared to treat you for um you know your hiv and stuff like that and sorry and i also wanted to i also actually found something else so there are a lot of art centers i believe throughout india which are there which actually take care of your HIV health and provide you medications and stuff like that. So if you're positive, you can actually download the NACO app, the okay. NACO, yeah, NACO yeah. app. And on the NACO app, you can go and actually click on your location and see the nearest clinic that actually provides mm -hmm. HIV care and ARVs. Uh, that's fine. I believe. Yeah. Yes, that's fantastic. And actually, I only learned two days ago in my live okay. session that I was doing with someone else. So it's really good to learn, you know, such mm. fantastic things. So I, I mean, that's that the whole point of discussing these things. That you know, exactly, you exactly. I'm so I think it thing. is encouraged that people, if you if you're positive, definitely download the NACO app, and that yeah. NACO app actually gives you information about the centers that are around where you are taking your location into consideration and it also yeah. gives you where the medication and treatment and all of that is actually uh, you know given mm -hmm. so I think that's a fantastic way uh, that um, yeah just fantastic way to do that so that's something that I wanted to tell people so so that's the best way to do it but if not bigger hospitals have sexual health uh, sorry not sexual health infectious disease uh, specialists um, that you can definitely go to, but I, I mean, some of the general I'd physicians. Like to do Sorry? with you that we should put together a directory of yes, all of the yes. doctors who are working in this area, just for the yes. benefit of everyone. Yeah, um, yes, and I think yeah. that's very important. And um, yeah, so I think you have a few people, and your general physicians or GP, general practitioners, as we call, yes. they do have uh, a you know a tendency to actually some of them can have HIV interest and stuff like that. Right. Um, so you can actually, you can start off by talking to them and I'm sure they will be a good source to actually refer you yes. off to a and place which actually you. does that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I think, yes, I think that's important as well. Oh, that was, that was great because I guess like, you know, everything, we discussed everything with the step one would be to actually see a professional. So that's right. okay, let me just quickly. No, I think that's very important. That's good you asked me because I had researched and i wanted to actually spread this yeah. out to all you know the amount the lives that i'm doing this month is all about hiv and aids and i will no, be spreading this out to everyone that. about this naco app and the art centers and the great work that they're actually doing in india so yeah i will definitely yeah. be putting this up on our uh, profile as well for you yeah. know so it's going to be there in case anybody wants to see it in the future and you can uh, pass it down as well um, we're almost running out of time so you know before we end this i would just like to thank you um, I have to tell you that I have so many questions which were just like popping in my mind. Um, and I was sort of trying to stick to uh, what I had written yeah. down because that was important. See, well. I, I mean, Artika, you can, you can write down all your questions and probably pass yeah. it on to me. And try, we I should try definitely to do, like, do this post. again. <laughs> yes, yes, I can do it again or we can make a post. We can create a post with answers for all those questions yes. and either put it on, you know, either on mm. the Team Tarani page or you can do it on my page, one of those two. Yeah, but that's I think, amazing. Uh, yes, we can do something about it, definitely. Uh, yeah. So so just so keep in touch. And all this month of definitely. December, I have dedicated to HIV and AIDS education and okay, answering all amazing. the questions. So, yes, so please send it to me and I'll keep doing that for sure. Okay, so, you know, I just have to thank you again on behalf thank of you. Uh, everyone who, has, uh, who had tuned in and uh, thank you so much for sharing your time with us. I know you have thank you, thank you. week and you have to be here. Thank you. Um, thank you so you much know. for having me and it's been an absolute pleasure and happy to help. Thank you so much. So is there anything, like any last thoughts that you want to leave us with? Um, you know, well, anything I, you have to say I with think... regard to this or anything else? 
No, I think I think the key that I very importantly want to say is HIV is not a death sentence anymore, and I think that's very important to get that into people's head. You don't have to freak out. You don't have to panic. You just have to go and ask for help. Um, and the second thing is getting your virus undetectable. Is is the mantra? I think that's the most important. That is going to benefit you from not getting AIDS or preventing it. Your part, everything. Yeah. The magic is you take the pill and make sure you get that virus under your dagger, and you should be fine. So like, so get these tested, are the two important. Yeah, tested, treated, treated is the key. Treated, keep. Yeah. yeah, you can't get treated if you don't get tested and you know that you're positive. So don't be scared. It's like you know, like any other chronic ailment. So go and definitely get it. Okay, thank you so much. On that note, I, you know, would definitely not want you to be late for the next one. No, no we so good. Thank good. you again. Thank you. Thank you. you. Thank you to um, everybody who tuned in. I hope this was helpful. In case you have more questions, you can either DM them to us at Team Tarini, or you can also DM them to Dr. Nivedita. Her account is tagged on our last post as well. So, um, you know, she's such a lovely person to talk to. So, uh, thank you. Know, please go ahead and ask her. Uh, Thank you, Atika. Thank, thank you. So thank much you so much. So I'm just gonna end this now. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Have a good day, everyone. Pleasure. Well. You too. You too. Thank okay, you. Bye. Bye.